All right. Well, hello, everyone. Good morning. Um, welcome in to our release recap for April of 2024. Um, I'm Amanda. I'm going to get started with USAS. Um, I'm actually going to hit inventory real quick as well um, while I'm going, and then we will switch over to the USPS uh, release uh, recap info. Okay, so uh, for USAS, we had uh, I have four different release versions on here to talk about. There were three regular releases and then one hot fix within um, this previous month. The first thing that I'm going to talk about is a financial detail report. Uh, the canned report had a performance improvement. Now, um, I'm sure you all know that one is uh, the canned version on the reports menu. That one has already had some really great improvements from uh, what you would get with the template report. Uh, this update specifically was able to make it better for large districts, for really large data sets, when you're running it for a full fiscal year and there's a lot of transactions. We still had some performance improvements that we wanted to do to that report in those certain scenarios. So this update kind of focused on that and then made sure that, you know, with our test data and stuff, it was tested with um like a specific situation the increase was an average of 68 percent better so um so that is in there that financial detail report on the reports menu has been improved uh the other thing that um we had on one of the updates was updating subject codes for 2024 so this is something that the team looks at every year. They um, coordinate with um, any ODE changes uh, to the subject codes. So that's the, the six digit subject code that can be used on the account codes. And I put a link here to the ODE website where it describes these changes. Um, if you have any questions on this, if you come in here, see this kind of maps out like what uh, the changes were, the reason for the changes, and that sort of thing. So the team looks through this and updates anything that um, links over to what's necessary for the subject codes in USAS. Uh, generally, that's like, you know, if they're a valid or not, um, you know, when saving, like what's available. So, so yeah, so those were reviewed, updated, um, you know, for 2024, I think it's like, so 2024 going into 2025. Um, and then, oh yeah, because ODE fiscal changes for 2024 is what the EMA site says. Sorry, I confused myself for a minute. <laughs> More coffee. <laughs> All right. Um, this next one is, um, implementing the ability to import users. And um, this would be importing like if you needed to add a bunch of users for some reason or even like making changes to users. So this is the system users grid. So, of course, this is only going to be available to users that actually have the ability to view or update users in the first place. Um, and then what I want to do for this one is the import criteria and template spreadsheet were added to the documentation. So I have that here. And so just like with the other um, import options on the grids, uh, like, you know, think like importing vendors or POs. <laughs> yes, Carol, need more coffee. I know it's one of those days, but I'm glad it's Friday. So we made it. <laughs> um, so, so just like with the other imports that we have um, for like specific, I guess, um, vendor records or the transaction imports, like, think POs, receipts, like the import button is actually on the grid of the thing that you're wanting to import to. So in this case, that's why we're going to the actual user's grid. And then it's going to be right along the top there. Um, so here's your general process that's kind of listed out here. But the important part with all of these um, imports is that we have a template. Um, and let me open this. I know this looks a little bit different than on some of our other documentation pages with the new wiki. I had to kind of add this one in here a little bit differently. So um, don't mind that. <laughs> uh, hang on, let me get back to where I was. Okay. Uh, so, oh, now it's changing on me. So here, oh my gosh. 
Okay, so here, so template spreadsheet, and then you just have to click this uh, user upload CSV is what's going to get you the template. Um, and then as well, with like the other imports that we have, we have all of the fields defined um, in the um, in the wiki as well. For this one, the only required field is actually the username. And then any of these other fields are not required. It just if you're wanting to actually like update uh, that information. Of course, when you're adding, you know, any of the other fields that that you would want to add, you would be able to include in that file. This could be helpful for like, um, so, you know, I know at this point, like a lot of you, you, you have your users in there. So it's probably like, why would I be using a spreadsheet to add users? Um, I could see a situation where maybe in the future, if you if there's like a district that maybe doesn't use rec approvals right now, but eventually they're going to want their buildings to like log in and enter requisitions and they don't have that set up. I could see a situation where a district may want to be adding a lot more people, a lot of new users to enter requisitions, let's say. Um, or if you have a situation where you are using like a, a maybe you make a custom role for something, then um, you can uh, update and like add roles um, with the spreadsheet. This would be helpful for adding MFA for districts. Yes, I believe we have a mass change for that too, but I know that sometimes doing it on a spreadsheet so you can check is really nice and you can do that. Um, <laughs> and someone else was thinking the same. Yeah. So uh, if you do want to do it for like, so roles as example, um, come in here, pay attention to these because it does, because of like how these fields are um, with attaching something like a role, then um, they have specific uh, formatting needed. So in this case, um, the name of any existing role, so say you have a use as standard user, and then if you want to add on like another custom role, do a comma, um, no space, uh, separate multiple rows, commas, or com or comma spaces. Sorry, they changed that to make sure that it wasn't a problem if there's a space. Um, so separated by commas then, and uh, you could have like multiple roles then listed on there. So you'd like list out use as standard plus their new role, and then you could upload the spreadsheet with that. Um, the other thing to point out here is group. So uh, group chains. If uh, you have a district that is setting up the um, requisition workflows in the future and you need to assign um, the group chains to them, this may be a lot easier to do through a spreadsheet than going in and updating those on a user. So uh, lots of helpful things here. Uh, yeah, we do have the two-factor um, flag here. So that's a true-false flag. So that's an option. Um, and then you know what? I opened this template. Let me show you. Uh, so it's pretty simple, but this would give you, so it gives you all the headings that you need. And if you um, use this, you know, you enter in the username, any of these fields you want, any that you're not bringing in, you could just delete those from the sheet and then just have the fields that you want. So again, the only required one is actually username. So that makes it pretty easy. Okay, we won't save that up. And then um, let me go back here. So that's importing users. Um, and then the other thing that I want to talk about real quick is this next one. So, uh, you know what? And I realize I usually zoom in on this a little bit for you. Let's do that and let's close this. So uh, the other one that I want to talk about here is work to implement posting uh, encumbrance adjustments has been done. The option will be available in a later release. Um, so this one is something where, uh, if, if you need, if you need this right now, we may still have tickets open, uh, with you for this, like, um, for encumbrance, like questions previously. So basically the general situation when this happened is, um, encumbrance issues that were, go back to migration. And so as we go throughout time, obviously that's getting longer and longer ago, you know, back in the day, there was a way where like, if something didn't uh, say like there was like a purge check situation, if you've ever had one of those, we found afterwards that it would basically make a difference in like what the PO encumbrances were versus what the account encumbrances were showing because the carryover encumbrances were getting sort of messed up year to year. Well, 
basically like it should have been different in the originating year depending on the situation this is not common so i hope i'm not scaring anyone but there were just very specific situations where it caused this issue and really the way to fix it was to go reopen the original year that it happened in well obviously at this point if we think back to migrations that's not that's not a realistic option anymore to actually go reopen years that are back and so in in having a couple situations where we had encumbrance issues along these lines um, and looking for a solution, what the team has done is made a way to add an encumbrance adjustment to the account side um, and be able to date that in the current year so that they can fix these issues going forward instead of having a situation where they'd have to go back multiple years because we know that they don't want to and can't do that, right? So um, we'll talk about this more when it comes out, but just if you like have these situations or if you have any tickets with us, we might mention like we're working on an option. And um, so basically like they've got like the developers have this done, but what we're gonna do is um, go through the tickets that we do actually have for these, which they're uh, complex tickets, <laughs> but we're gonna test this option and make sure it works exactly how it needs to before it's in the release. Um, once it's available, it's only going to be available to you all at the ITC. This is like a very much an exception situation. It's not something you'll be using regularly, um, to make changes to encumbrances on accounts. This is pretty much just going to be one of those things where if you have a ticket with us and we need some way to do this, there will be certain scenarios where it's appropriate. And, um, and it's, it's basically just giving us an option to be able to to fix something when it does need to be fixed without having to go back. So that's my spiel on that. Um, again, when that actually comes out, we'll talk about it. If we have a ticket um, with you where you're gonna need to use that, we're planning on mapping out you know, the steps that you'll need to take. Again, um, we're planning on testing with those. So we'll have it all um, set to go when it comes time. Um, all right. And then these last three that I have on here are really not things that you're seeing um, in the software. Like these are just kind of things that are happening in the background, but the team has been working on them. So they've been listed on the releases. Uh, so improving intrusion detection behavior. So that's a security um, related update. Improvements to the USAS anonymizer, which include dropping log files, audit tables, and performance improvements. So the team has been working on um, the anonymizer, which eventually uh, will be available to um, anonymize like test instances um, or demo instances rather. Uh, and then research the spring badge for uh, future use in fund change implementation. So that's kind of looking ahead and doing some research for a future update. And then um, last thing for USAS is uh, we did also have the hotfix and the hotfix was when we had updated that canned um, financial detail report performance. There was something that had been missed in that. There was a, an issue that was caused right after that. So the team fixed that and put out a hotfix right away to make sure that that report was still functioning properly, even with the performance, you know, even after that um, update that had increased the performance. So so the problems were corrected, so that's all set to go now, um, but that was just also done in April. Um, okay, and then while I'm here, you know, I know we don't usually kind of like skip ahead, but I'm going to scroll down to inventory because for inventory, we um, just had a hot fix this month. And this also, same thing to keep it consistent with that um, improved intrusion detection behavior. Again, that's like a security mechanic. Um, that was also uh, done for inventory. Um, around the time that it was done for USAS as well. So um, that that was there for inventory. We did have a another release on May 1st that um, the release notes are out there. We'll cover that in the next recap. But um, if you are or if you are um, interested, the the notes are are available and it, it has been released. So all right, so that's what I have for USAS and for inventory. Um, and then we'll go ahead and get ready to switch over to USPS. Thanks, Amanda. No problem. Here we go. Good morning. Um, happy Friday. Um, I'll be going over the payroll releases 
for the month of April. Um, in April, we did have um, three normal re uh, regular releases and then one hot fix. So we'll jump right into the bug fixes. Um, the first one I did in red because this one does go with an improvement that was down here that um, we released this one first. And this was the perfect attendance report in ABS where we uh, they added the multiple pay types. So now if you go to ABS 103 and perfect it expires, I knew that was going to happen. There we go. Try that again. And we'll go to reports and attendance do perfect attendance is that what I hit so now you can run the report with um, multiple categories by just selecting them and um, doing the double click or you can um, I think it's just double yeah or a click and move over so again now they have that option where they can run those um, multiple um, categories and same goes for the um, ABS 103 and now they have um, can run it for multiple categories. Same same thing. So I think that's a good improvement. Um, so with that came a bug then, um, which we found um, right after we released it, and that was um, when they were running the report, they were getting a um, error um, and it was breaking um, the user interface. So that was fixed. That was kind of behind the scene thing that just needed to be fixed. But I just want to let you know that those two went together. So we just, I just want to go over those right away. Um, and then the next bug um, was a search report. Um, we found out when um, some districts were using by accident entering in the uh, 450 board error adjustment or entering under core under adjustments. They were using the board amount of payroll item. Um, these two should not be included on the STRS per pay report, which I have one here. And this amount was get included here and that is that was not correct. That should not be affecting that um, column at all. So what they did is just took that off altogether. I mean, it's still there, um, but if they do accidentally put it in there, it's not going to even show up on the report. It's just going to ignore that entry. The next one was the payroll validation. Um, again, this was uh, something they did behind the scenes, so it's not anything that you or the districts will see. It was just um, a payroll calculations um, they were working on with validating payroll. So then we'll go down to improvements. Um, the first one was new contracts calculated unit amounts. Um, when a if a district uh, was doing a mid year change and they it was because the contract work days were wrong, um, what they noticed was it was not calculating using the new contract work days. It still was using the old. So that was an improvement that was made. So now when a district has to do a mid-year change, it's because if, if it was because their work days were wrong in the beginning on the original contract, now the system will know to look at the new updated contract work days of the mid-year change. So that was something that was improved. Um, the next one was the expenditure counts. This was a biggie. Um, this is the one where we... Um, completely redid the payroll accounts. So now when they go to payroll accounts under core, they're only going to see one. Because before we had payroll accounts and we had payroll accounts new, that is all, the old payroll accounts has completely been taken off and now you're now it's just one payroll accounts. And so they just updated that all into one and made it um, combine them. And in that update that we did, um, the dimensions were showing like dimension one, two, um, three. So, but now when they look on, let me move myself out of the way. Now, when they look on here, they'll see the headers of the correct. So now they match what USAS is states to fun, function, object. And again, if you want to add that to the expenditure um, that's under uh, more, and again, you can add all these different um, column headers now. 
And also in that update, um, they removed the mass change that is not able to be um, available for this new payroll accounts. So now there is no more mass change, but you can use the mass load. So they will just have to follow, and I have the link here for the mass load documentation that'll take you into the payroll accounts. Um, they will just, if they have to update a field, they'll have to use uh, a spreadsheet to update that and then go into uh, mass load and select payroll accounts um, once they create that CSV. Another feature that had to be removed was the search option under payroll accounts when they created. So when you're in here, you're no longer going to see that search option here. That is completely, that is gone now. But when you're under payroll in future or current, and you're underneath like creating or underneath an employee and you create an account, it's still there. So when you are doing or adding payroll accounts during payroll, it is there, that search option. So it's just not under payroll accounts anymore, but it's still there for current and um, future. Okay. Um, so then with that, um, again, the payroll account view, the old one was removed. Um, they did add a reporting feature now for the payroll accounts. So now when they go in there, they can create a report, which I I, um, I think that would be very nice. And again, you can do um, PDF or Excel. Um, they have those different options there. Not sure how long this will take me to run, but let's see. While that's running, I will show um, another thing they did was um, in that they had to update a bunch of different filters or different um, report options. So what they did was when they were doing that, um, it updated any um, reports that use accounts. So that was um, ran behind the scenes to update um, the custom report creator. They had to go ahead and update that to make sure they were using the new expenditure count look. Um, so now all the reports and everything should work um, with this new um, set of payroll counts. And um, if there is an issue, please let us know. Okay, there we go. I'll see, click. So here's the payroll count report now. So now you can run that payroll count and see the report. So this is the PDF version, um, version of it. So um, you can go ahead and run that if they need to now. I'm just going to go ahead and show you that. Okay, so I think that was it on that expenditure when they had to go and rename all those properties. And then what every um, report or um, UI used that, um, that was also updated behind the scenes. So, okay, so we'll move to the next one. Uh, job calendar report. They worked on that again um, to improve it. So now it should print on two pages. And I had printed one. And it did print on two pages. I mean, it has my options page, of course, but it did print on two pages. So now districts, because they were asking for the only two page print. Um, so that should be working now and they shouldn't see any more issues with that. Okay. The next one is the ODGFS report. Um, district had found a they had entered a, fir a new first name in the legal, but left the uh, last name blank when they ran the ODHF's report. What it was doing, it was not looking at that new legal name. It was still looking at the old um, in the regular, just a regular name column. Um, and what it should be doing, like W2 report does, if you enter a different first name just in the legal, it should look at the legal name first nothing there, then it should go up to the um, the regular name. So now ODGS report and W2 report should match now. Um, and they are looking at legal first. If it's blank, then it will go up to the regular and use that name. And they can, they can enter one or the other. They can enter all new uh, last name, first name, middle in the legal, or they can just enter, if it's um, just a different name in legal, they can enter that and it'll look at just that le first legal name 
and then go up to the regular and use the old, um, the regular um, employee name. When I say that, I'm trying to, I'll get a, so you can see what I'm talking about here. Right here. So if they didn't have anything in these columns here, um, when they ran the report, it would look at Judith and then use the middle name um, up here at the regular name and the regular last name. So they don't need to have this whole column fill out anymore. They can just have the what it should be here. And then it will look at these other fields. <clears throat> Okay, the next one, um, the, there was a request to add a, a new role for custom field manager. So now when you go under systems in roles, you're gonna see a new role added. And what this does, you can add this to any of your um, users now. Um, it will give them access to create, delete, report, um, update and view four date codes and also it gives them access to custom field definitions. So that's what this new role is going to be doing. So again, um, if you want to give that to your uh, districts, want to give that to their employees, they just have to go into that new user role. So uh, go to that uh, their user and go in and give them that um, new custom field, which you can't because that's a manager role. Let me get a different one here. Oh, wait, there we go. There we go. So now you can just give them that and they should be able to, if they weren't able to see it before, now they'll have access to that, um, those two core in the system custom fields. Okay. The next one was this historical payroll count. Um, the some a district I think was trying to run the report under or the home report, of the, not the version two, but the version one, and they could not run it in CSV. It was having issues uh, running it in CSV. So now they update it. So now they can run it in CSV. Um, it kind of still looks like this, but um, but now they can run that. They were it was uh, uh, an issue behind, so they got that fixed. And we do have a juror issue that when one request was to add it to the CAN report to just have that account history report just be added under our normal reports. And so that was a juror issue for that one to be worked on. Um, I believe that's all I have. Um, is there any questions on the new release or on the recess for April? Okay, um, I will head it over to Michelle. She has something so she wanted to go over with you. So let me unshare my screen here. Thanks, Andrea. Um, I'm sorry, I, we forgot to, uh, I forgot to make this public, the uh, recap session, so. Just did that, so you guys should be able to see the wiki page now. Sorry about that. Uh, let me find my where I can stop sharing. There we go. Okay. All right. Thanks, Andrea. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to touch base with you guys a little bit on uh, upcoming sessions. Um, and just uh, the session that um, move this out of the way here. Um, Matt sent an email out a couple days ago via SSDT notices about some virtual sessions that are going to take place for employee self-service. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you guys got those um, emails. Um, there is going to be a session on May 10th. Um, I believe these sessions may have come out of um, a director's meeting that they had um, where they wanted to have a, a few or, or a couple additional sessions. So they had, he had scheduled a session on May 10th that is really geared toward the end user. I know we have our fiscal year end review session next Friday for USAS and inventory. So um, so that's why I'm, I, you know, 
this is really geared towards the end user and not so much the ITC at this point. So he provided those Zoom links in the email. Um, so please uh, share that May 10th Zoom information with your districts and um, they'll go over, I believe um, Matt will be doing that session and he will be covering um, the like an ESS demo for the end user and what they're going to see. And then on Thursday, May 16th, uh, we are going to be doing a session for ITCs only. And this is a must see for you guys. This will talk about the ESS conversion process. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm gonna get some thank yous from that. I'm gonna be learning too on that one. Um, but uh, they'll talk about um, the ES, the kiosk extracts. Um, they'll discuss that and your involvement with that. And they will also, yes, these will be, uh, these will be recorded as well, absolutely. So they'll go through the um, ESS extracts. They'll talk about the kiosk import loads that are going to be done in ESS. Um, and they'll probably, I'm assuming, talk about the installation procedures. Um, and so with that, I wanted to show you guys um, just out here in our main page, if I go down to the employee self-service documentation, um, I did make the uh, user guide public last Friday after we did our training with you all. Um, so that's out there. I'm telling you now, it's a little bit of a hot mess. I probably have the first half of the manual in good shape, but the second half of the manual I'm working on. So like users down, there's a lot to do still, but hopefully we'll get that up and running and ready for you guys uh, by the end of next week. Um, also, we do, and this is open to the public, so anyone can see this. Um, but um, also, Mark has um, knocked out a couple of um, guides as well. He's got the installation guide out here, and he's got the import guide. So these are the things that they're going to be covering on the 16th with you guys. Um, the installation guide is more the technical installation. You're familiar with that. Your tech departments are familiar with that. <laughs> Excuse me, when they did USAS inventory payroll. And so we'll have an uh, installation guide there as well. I'll talk about what needs to be done to set up the instances, as well as um, Active Directory, uh, Duo implementation, things like that. And then the actual import is the steps um, needed to import that extracted data from kiosk. So we're not going to make everyone <laughs> enter this stuff um, in a blank. Uh, ESS instance. So um, they have been in talks with the uh, developers, the kiosk developers, and um, they are working hard on getting the rest of the extract information available to the Management Council. Um, so that from what I'm understanding is that what will happen is, um, and the ITCs will be involved in this part, is there will be an option in kiosk in their configuration where you can download the extract for that district. So you'll be logging into kiosk for that district. There'll be a download option that will contain compressed files then um, that you guys will then take and import into uh, the ESS kiosk load option. So that's just for admin, um, I believe, and maybe district manager roles. Um, but that's what they'll get into um, is they will, you know, explain that and go into these um, documents. And just to show you, this one's great. I just, this is, Mark did an excellent job on this. Um, and he goes in and just talks about what can be imported in and um, explains where those are at, the menu, how to go in and load each one of them in. So I think right now there are this is going to probably change. I think he's already updated it already. Um, but I think there's at least nine, maybe 10 different files that you're going to be importing in to uh, ESS. Um, so users is a big one. You know, taking those users from kiosk and importing them in the workflow information. So 
a lot of that will be in there available. There are roles that will be part of, of, I believe, the user import. So that will all be in there um, and made available then. And that way you don't have to enter that stuff in manually. So um, he's done a great job with that. Like I said, the installation guide <clears throat> has all the information needed to create, um, to get the USPS setup, the workflow setup done, create the containers, get that all the instances created, and then the post install procedures would probably, I'm assuming, consist of the kiosk load import. So. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is a work in progress as well. So all three of these documents are. So, but I believe these two, um, you might want to check this out, but I believe you guys have to log in in order to see these two documents. I don't believe they're open to the public. Um, so uh, you'll need to log into your um, Atlassian account and uh, in Wiki in, in, in order to see those. Um, but this one is public. And so, like I said, our user guide, we're about halfway there. So users down, we're working on. So I wanted to let you know about that. And also, so again, just going back to that one document here. Um, so please, you know, pass on that Zoom information to your districts for next Friday. And then on the 16th, um, the conversion process. And like I said, both of these will be recorded. Um, so that uh, if you're not able <clears throat> to attend those meetings, you'll be able to review the recording later. Okay, um, so to talk about the upcoming, other upcoming sessions here. So May is a pretty big, busy month um, as well. So again, we just covered the recap. Um, next week, so we're doing things a little differently this year. We're going to cover USAS and inventory on the 10th. We're gonna go through the fiscal year and checklist for those two. And then on the 17th, we'll be covering USPS. Um, you know, after last year, it's just too much information to cover all that in one session. So we wanted to break it out for you guys. Um, and so we'll cover USPS on the 17th. So that's the day after that ESS ITC technical demo. Um, and then on the 24th, we're going to be covering some USAS fiscal year end EMIS related information, the MOE, balancing, period H information, and how they can balance that back to USAS. So lots of good information there. So um, we appreciate you guys, you know, being able to attend this, um, these sessions. And we also appreciate you guys being here today. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out, create a ticket. Um, and uh, obviously, if we need to have more ESS sessions before our next one, which is June 28th, we can fit those in. So um, again, we appreciate any questions you have. Ah, okay, uh, we've got, I'm kind of scanning through the, the chat here. We've got a couple questions here before I sign off. Will the ESS sessions be recorded? Yes, they will. Um, when will the early release be um, for ESS? Actually, I believe the announcement is coming today. So I believe the early release is officially um, going to be announced um, today. So, um, and then with that, they will be sending out an email via SSDT notices to all of you with all the information in regards to that. I believe if I go back to our main homepage, which you guys probably can't see quite yet, um, I think um, they're working on, you know, having the release link for employee self-service out here. So obviously that's not quite ready yet, but we will have that out there. And, um, and then, you know, we have the documentation here. So any other questions? Michelle, I, a couple quick ones. I know in our last call, I think it may have been prioritization. Um, Matt and Mark, we're going to check with the kiosk folks, along with all of those downloads, the configuration settings. Um, you know, do we know where that's at yet? Because I know that's a big piece and a lot of intricate, excuse me, details um, that we don't want to miss. And then the other thing is on the 16th, I was reading through the installation guide and some of that stuff, I know with the evolution of the VRA with hosting with MCOACN, some of those things like 
they look like French and Greek to me. Like, but I know that there's like one click steps out on the VRA that do some of those things that are described so well in the installation guide. Will that kind of be broke out to those ITCs that host themselves and those ITCs that host with MCOACN? So if we don't have to do some things on the back end, that we can skip those steps and kind of do a more fine tuned step by step at the ITC level? Yeah, I mean, answer your second one. I will look into that, um, Heidi, and see if that's something that can be broken out a little bit better for those that are hosting versus those versus those that aren't. So um, definitely, um, I will make sure, you know, that um, I think they're still, you know, trying to get that all worked out. So um, I'm going to go in there real quick. So right now. So yeah, so you're kind of just wanting something to to denote that you know if you're hosting with the management council, you follow this, and if you're hosting locally, you follow this. Is that what you're? It you're is wanting? like even with the last waves that we took or rounds that we took for like this was fabulous. However, we were able to create our own like here's what you do now, here's what you do on the VRA, and I know Chad's done so much amazing work out there to make things much simpler. Like there's a lot of this that we can actually skip or even the API key. Um, we used to have to copy and paste from one to another for USAS and USPS and that you don't so much have to do any more now they look at each other. Um, so, you know, things like that, we just don't wanna overdo things that we don't need to overdo. No, I, I get it. So I'll make a note of that here. And as for your uh, first question, so in regards to, I know what you're talking about in kiosk and the configuration, it's um, all of the intricate leave type of information. Um, I believe that you might be talking about. So from what I'm understanding, and I am going to go in to back into our installation guide, the kiosk load. And so in here, and I don't believe it is out here yet. It isn't. Um, from what I'm understanding, um, the organization information is going to be pulled in as well as that um, ESS configuration. And I know it had a lot of different options in there. And then with one of those options, it had the leave type configuration where you can select certain um, options and leave type, like do you, um, I'm trying to think of some of them, do you want an expense report attached to it on this particular leave type? Um, do you want subs required um, on this leave type? I believe what they're gonna do is they're going to have uh, one for the organization data, which is just the district information. They're going to have another leave import for all of those options under the ESS configuration, except for the leave type one, that will be a separate one as well. So I'm talking three more here that I believe are going to be in there as well. Um, so, um, so you have all of that intricate detail of all of those selections in ESS, can, are, are, you're able to convert those over. So just discussed that yesterday at the sprint meeting. So again, those will be updated in here as well. So, um, so yeah, so really when we think about it, a lot of the information is going to get um, pulled, pulled in and converted over. So um, that will really help everyone, uh, ITCs and the districts to have all of that um, moved over. Okay. Any other questions uh, regarding um, our upcoming training sessions or ESS? All right, awesome. Thanks you guys for um, attending today. You all have a wonderful weekend. Hopefully the rain will stop, getting tired of it. We'll have a beautiful weekend. So enjoy it and we'll see you guys next week. Thanks.